All right, guys, so this just happened recently. A suspect carjacked a vehicle on the highway in Salt Lake City in front of everybody. Passerby is caught on a, a camera, and this is the pursuit after this guy jacked this car, uh, supposedly a brand new car from a guy. I heard his little interview, and now they're chasing him down, so here we go. They're in pursuit, and they're trying to get him stopped. And this is about to kick off. Here we go. So two officers inside looks like a potential unmarked uh, vehicle. It could be marked. I don't, I don't know. It looks a little bit, if they're rolling too deep, could be potentially unmarked. Little shuffle steer, steer in there. Uh, I'm not sure what he's seeing, but looks like he's, they're going a little bit off-road. They're hopping around a little bit. A little, little bit of an industrial park area. And he's about to bail out of the car, puts it in drive, and bam, here we go. Okay, here we go. We just kicked it off. I was right about the unmarked car. This is the first time I've seen this video. One of the key things to note, they are off-road. They're in an industrial area, looks like maybe by the airport. They get this guy off-road. He's stopped in front of them, and they go to exit. He throws it in park. He goes to jump out, and as soon as he jumps out, he's going to draw his pistol, and he, st he states um, his intent, uh, show me your hands, uh, whatever he says, and then shots pop off. Good on this officer, which is the first body camera that we're looking at right now with this unmarked car, of pulling back um, and getting behind adequate cover and right now concealment because the windows are tinted so he, he potentially can't see him. But he has something here. Now, as his buddy bailed out on the passenger side and it looks like he went wide, he's out of this frame, but let's see where he's at. Okay, he's already at a slide lock. So this dude's using, it looks like a Glock 17 or, it's a Glock 17 or Glock 22. Uh, it, a lot of departments are using 22s now, but he's got a, he's got suppressor sights, uh, sights that are just a little bit higher to get over that Trigicon RMR. He's got a Surefire light on it. Uh, it. Looks like a really stock setup for his Glock 17 or Glock 22. I can't tell what's chambered in. It's the same frame. Uh, one's just chambered in 9 mil. One's chambered in 40. But if he had a 17, he would be. 17 rounds without a base plate plus one in the chamber if he was a glock 22 at a 40 cow i believe he would be at 15 rounds in one of the chamber if you guys uh want to correct me because you're a glock guy make sure you leave your comment comments and feedback below but he's at slide lock he's already completely out of ammo okay that looked like a uh i can't tell but i'm gonna go with that that's a glock 22 and based on the round count of him running out of ammo very fast i'm gonna go with that as well Ooh, see, like uh, a little pet peeve, guy. Guys, we talked about this before on Reacts, where I'm kind of micro analyzing tactics. I, I am doing that for the benefit of you as an end user who is uh, interested in self protection. Philcraft Survival, we have a ton of training courses for self protection, but also for the officers that are involved or police officers throughout the United States. When you are encountering a threat, especially when you're in a gunfight, the threat is, let's just say downrange. Where the direction of that threat as, uh, where the direction of that threat is, your orientation of your barrel should never be anywhere other than the direction of that threat. Uh, like he basically uh, got into a position where he hunkered down and he duck walked along the passenger side of his vehicle. And as he did that, bam, he's right here. Now, What's the issue with doing that? Well, the issue ultimately is your reaction time. So if you're moving, especially in depth, trying to encounter and engage the bad guy, you want the orientation of this barrel pointed at the direction of where the threat is located. So your reaction time is only that and not you picking up the gun and then reacting, right? So we want to keep that uh, barrel oriented towards the threat. Uh, even in this uncomfortable position, he should be doing that. We get sucked up into a false sense of security 
behind cover. And we forget guys who have tactics, guys who know, know how to shoot, move, and communicate could flank and maneuver your position. So you, so you always need to be prepared to fight. And I, I just mentioned that because there is an afterthought here, uh, which I'll describe the suspect uh, after we get through this video. Goes into another slide like reload. Now, I, I know what a lot of you guys are going to say. Oh my God, he flagged this dude's leg. Uh, I'll show you exactly in that moment. Slide lock, bam, right here. He's literally pointing at the back of his calf or the back of his knee. Yes, he is. But he's showing safe gun handling skills. And in this circumstance, hey, man, he went around the back of the vehicle to do a slide lock reload. Uh, if you punch a Glock on the bottom of the mag uh, base plate hard enough, it will drive the slide forward over that round. Um, and and it, it's, a, it's an effective tactic at a clean slide lock uh, reload. There's nothing wrong with that. But even look at the grip that he's established on this gun. That is a proper grip. He's got proper gun handling and safe tactics. Do I want him to flag his buddy's leg? No, but in this case, especially under fire, hey man, this kind of stuff happens. Uh, if you've ever been in combat, you've ever been in a gunfight, some things are going to give. Is he out? Is he out? Now, here's what I don't like, and here's what happens with officers. You can see the reflection. There's both of them there. And they're kind of assessing, like, hey, what's going on? And maybe they know definitively that they put the suspect down. But their posture of going from fight and, and, and potentially a sympathetic nervous response where they're in it. They're all jacked up on adrenaline, uh, on, uh, on cortisol. They're in the engagement, and then all of a sudden they check out. Don't check out until you've total and wholeheartedly have confirmed that the suspect's no longer a threat. That means they see him laying uh, by the vehicle and, and they know he's dead um, and, and they've completely confirmed that together. Because right now, they're standing with their guns laying by their side and again, another pet peeve of mine, the fight's not over until it's over. No, he's going past one eight four. Oh, look at that. I, I didn't need, I, I'm again analyzing this video for the first time via my guys and <laughs> Right there is a prime example of what not to do. They have their guns down. They're like checked out and they're still receiving income and fire. Then they have to check back in. When you check into a fight, the orientation of the gun is towards the threat. You are maneuvering and staying dynamic. Dynamic means movement, guys. Guys who are trained know this concept of staying dynamic. Staying dynamic with fluid movement until the threat's neutralized could have been the detriment of these uh, police officers who weren't paying attention uh, if this guy flanked and maneuvered on their position because their guns were down. They're just standing around. Uh, right, now, here is the, uh, the video camera uh, body cam perspective of the passenger police officer. So here we go. Same, same circumstance. He's about to hit 500 soft. He's bailing out. He's out. Okay, so he's getting primed. So, you know, there's a lot of things that happen neurologically under stress when you don't have training or you don't have deliberate tactics or conscious tactics to deliver. Like his hand went to the, to the uh, door. It went down. He's got a lot of things going on, right? He's trying to figure things out. Not a criticism. This is normal. Negative. We're on Orange Street. And... I like that. You see that? The the passenger side window just hit the fence. 100 south. He's going through the, the railroad tracks. Smart tactic. He got the window down, right? That's a smart tactic. Uh, instead of uh, having to fight through a potential obstacle, he's got the window down, and he's prepped to bail out of his vehicle because he thinks, they think, the suspect might bail. In, in fact, he said and announced that there was a potential bail, which is likely the suspect opening his door looking like he's going to stop and bail but they they obviously are continuing pretty calm demeanor i wonder um so he goes to pull his uh, one thing i always teach law enforcement officers is how to get in and out of a seatbelt and how to get in and out of a vehicle because that's where you lose 
and potentially have a saving of a lot of time in reacting to especially a threat that's immediate where right when you get out of the car, you're under, you're under fire. So he reached over with his left hand, and maybe that tactic was to grab the, the, uh, uh, the door, open the latch with his left hand, and then have the ability to draw his pistol with his right. If that's deliberate, uh, very good tactic. Okay. So, I, I, hey, I'm just being a little bit more concerted with this effort here. I want to teach you guys. We do have a video on this. You see how he opened the door? When he flung the door, he had to position his arms to be able to stop this. There's a very easy tactic here to stop that door uh, in its tracks. If you kick open a door or push open a door with your hands and let it go, it will reach the end via the hinges and bounce back. They're meant to do that, by the way. It's, it's like a engineering feat where the door is going to close automatically when you fling the door open, right? It's not going to stop. The hinges are greased for that mobility. Well, he opened it with his hands and had to stop it with his hands. If at any point you wanted to stop this door, the only thing you needed to do is hit it with your foot once. That would end the momentum, and you could take your foot from impacting the door to down on the ground and, and would never have to do anything else. But he doesn't do that. Here. The door bounces back on him, and you could see with his support hand, he had to stop that door from bouncing back on him. Just a real easy, simple tactic where the door is open, you hit it with your foot once, and then drop your foot to the ground, and it won't go anywhere. So here we go. Ooh. So this is a, 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 a worse off circumstance for this officer. Now, under most uh, routine circumstances for these law enforcement officers, they encounter a suspect. They say, get your hands up, get on the ground, and the suspect is compliant. They're not often in gunfights. So he pushed his position where he has no cover, no concealment. He's in the open, but he's flanked a little bit behind the suspect. So he has the advantage of angles where likely the guy is looking at the driver and not the passenger. But again, he's in the open, not the best place to be. Also, it looks like the vehicle is inoperable because it looks like it's high-sided on an obstacle. Okay. <laughs> I teach a law enforcement survival drill that I teach civilians as well in reacting to contact, and it's this exact same drill. Now, when you initiate contact, you need to start movement. Movement is synonymous, guys, with survival. You have to get off the X. The X is the kill zone. You are in it. He is in it right now. Now, I don't know what his tactic is going to be in moving, but the fact that he broke shots and started his movement, which is part of our drill, that's exactly what I want to see. Okay. That's a significant issue for me. Now, when we, when we talk about movement, we want to delineate between uh, in-depth or out-of-depth movement and lateral movement off the X. The problem with in depth or out of depth, like him moving backwards, is he is not reducing the size of his body much, right? Like if you're this wide from five meters, at 25 meters, you're like this wide. So what matters there is the deviation from the shooter's perspective. So the bad guy is like, has the pistol in his hand and he's like, miss. For a hit, it's like my, minor, um, uh, movements to deviate because he's at the apex of of the uh, the range fan, so it's only minor deviation. But if you move laterally, you're forcing the shooter to move his hand and his body position uh, over his hips because at some point he can't stretch his upper body anymore and he has to remove and realign his body. That's the hardest thing to do as a shooter. Period. Good or bad or whatever. So him moving just backwards. The shooter doesn't have to deviate much. He could literally uh, spray and pray. Boom, 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 boom. Five shots across a grazing field of fire, which he has, and, and then he would potentially get hit. So what should his movement have been? Well, he's got a nice, beautiful, black covered uh, a, a piece of cover and concealment in that vehicle that he was just in, where if he would have moved laterally off the X, he would have got behind potentially the A pillar, the B pillar, and the C pillar of that car. He still has no cover. I hate that. And he's, he's doing a standing slide lock reload, which is, look guys, this is one of the problems that you see in tactical training on flat ranges. 
So he's just turning his body away from the threat. Because when you're in open space on a flat range, if you just take a knee or you turn your body away, then the bad guy can't see you. Well, I don't know what this is going to accomplish. The only thing that this accomplishes is he's now taking his body position off the X or off the threat and is still standing in the open. And, and that's not a good tactic. I mean, he's doing a side lock reload in the open. And I'm, look, I'm not criticizing the officers. The officers are doing the best they can. I'm giving you best practice and best tactics here as somebody who's trained law enforcement really his whole entire career, but also does it now for a living. Okay, that's good. I'll give the officer credit there. As he does a slide lock reload, he maybe has a spidey sense to start maneuvering behind cover uh, by or orienting the position of his body over to the in his in his direction the left so he could be behind cover when he reorients into the fight I, I don't know why he's got so much standoff and guys this is w exactly why i hate the soul this is so infuriating to me the reason you do soul is because soul is by the way is taking the pistol and putting it down here or temple index would be orienting it here that is used as a tactic and private security or personal security and PSD when you are in close proximity to the people you're trying to protect and the guys on your team you're not trying to flag. This guy as a default goes to Seoul in the middle of being in the open behind minimal, I wouldn't call it adequate cover, while maneuvering towards a threat. So what does he need to be doing? He needs to have the orientation of his pistol presented towards a threat even if it's behind cover, like maybe he can't even see the guy, but if he has his gun extended, he can react appropriately and he needs to be hauling ass behind that cover next to his partner, getting different angles to be to provide um, more coverage on the suspect's vehicle. Watch him go soon. What is happening right here? Like, do not do that, guys. Never do that. You know what that is? That's a training scar. That is a training habit. Please do not do that. So now what do we have? We have an officer who's behind cover because he collapsed behind cover because he was receiving a probably accurate fire on his position. And then you have an officer who's the only one left in the fight who has his a pistol in the sole position pointed at the ground asleep. Don't do that. Gets back in it. Goes back to school. Oh, I don't know why he's doing that. Don't do that, guys. Your best tactical advantage is keeping the gun in the fight oriented to give yourself the best reaction time. Yeah. Another bad habit here, guys. In, in tactical training, there's a lot of time spent on the presentation of a pistol and then the pulling out of that pistol to represent the pistol. We call that the shot process. Do not continue to put the gun in and out and in and out and in and out. It's why we teach that if you're moving, moving around cover, even pieing around cover, that you keep adequate distance so you don't have to keep retracting and extending your pistol. Keep the gun in the fight. Now, in this particular situation, he might be making a call that's critical to life saving, but you have two guns. Look at the gun, his gun and look at his partner's gun that are out of the fight. Keep them in the fight until the gunfight's over. Worry about comms secondary to security when you're in the middle of a gunfight. Oh. No, he's going past the gunfight. Finish the gunfight, guys. I don't know if you saw that last part. The last part said... Uh, the officers fought to keep the suspect alive for 15 to 20 minutes before he died. Now, here's what I want to say in closing about this is the suspect was a member of the U.S. military. He was a veteran. Uh, he had done one trip to Iraq, three trips to Afghanistan, and he was a combat medic. I don't know. I haven't confirmed if he was a special operations guy, but one of the things that was stated was how this guy's tactics was different, and it was a running gunfight, as you saw. So uh, what does that mean in the context of the gunfight? Nothing, because a, a suspect's a suspect that's shooting at you when you're trying to protect your life. Even his wife that went on TV to talk about her husband 
stated that they didn't. She didn't blame the officers for doing their job, and her husband certainly would have understood that. What I want to use it as an example of is a lot of people that we confront, especially that are off the rocker in the middle of a gunfight, are not mentally stable. Now, this guy supposedly had a traumatic brain injury, had PTSD, was being treated at a VA. I don't know that. I think it's tragic. A lot of guys who I know who have post-traumatic stress that stems from TBI deal with a lot of these mental health issues, including my own. I mean, I have my own issues where my brain has brain damage. Um, if you want to see the case study, look at the NFL because they spend lots of money at doing case studies on NFL professional football players and not really a lot of soldiers in special operations. But there's a lot of organizations that are trying to help these guys out. I just want to tell you that because I want to tell you if you need help, please go seek it. There's nothing wrong with seeking help. Never let yourself get to the end state of a cat catastrophe, especially self-induced. These, these officers did their job. They did right. They could change and adapt their tactics, and I hope you got something out of this. Um, uh, body cam uh, footage from Salt Lake C City police officers. This is stuff that officers deal with every single day in this country, and I'm proud of you for doing your job. Get better. Till next time. Peace out, guys.